Ladies, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Brent. We are the owners of Bella Vita, and we are celebrating 20 years in business this year. I've been with the company 19 years. I've been with the company 13. Awesome. Yeah. So we are going to take you on our journey and our story over the last 20 years and kind of the trials, the struggles, behind the scenes, the, behind the, scenes, yeah. the celebrations, yep. uh, life's moments of right. happiness and sadness, right. um, but really just take you along our journey of where we started to where we are now. Right. So when he suggested the idea of buying Bella Vita, I didn't think he was totally crazy. I remember sitting behind the counter back in the day. There wasn't near as much traffic. I actually studied while I was at work and the owner knew that. That was not a secret. Um, but I would go through the catalogs and say, oh, we could buy this, we could buy this. This would be a fun display. So it wasn't completely like way out there, but at the same time, the idea of obviously graduating and starting my own business all within the same couple months was pretty crazy. So when I was in the fourth grade, my grandmother, my dad's mom, gave each of her three grandchildren $100 to see who could make it grow the most. And I was super excited about this challenge. First, let me note that I'm the youngest of the three grandchildren. I'm the only girl, something I still harass my cousins about today. Um, but I came up with the idea of uh, making jewelry. So I came up with this business name, Styles by Steph, and I turned that $100 into $4,000 in one year. I clobbered the boys. Um, one of them decided to sell candy bars door to door, lame. And the other one <laughs> decided to put it in the stock market. So they're both super successful men today. Um, but I did win that competition um, and got diamond earrings from my grandmother. But yes, I've always been super competitive. And um, I would say that definitely was the start to my entrepreneurial spirit. So I began working at Bella Vita in 2001. Two. And in 2003, I was graduating from college at the University of Memphis, and my dad actually um, came up with the idea of, have you ever thought of owning the store? I mean, honestly, I'd never really um, known exactly what I wanted to do. I was a marketing major, but didn't know what I was going to exactly do with that degree. Um, and we just kind of started talking about it, and I was there all the time running the store already currently for the pre-existing owner. Um, and so it just kind of sounded like a natural transition to try. So I grew up in a family business. My parents owned a Service Master franchise in Seattle, which is actually where I was uh, born and raised. Um, and I'm an only child. I was expected to get up at 5 a.m., go into work with my dad. Um, I was able to go back to sleep if I wanted to in his office, but I mean, it was, you know, before school, after school, I lived and breathed that business with him. So 100% it influenced my future, absolutely. So I graduated from college after purchasing Bella Vita. So the official date that I purchased Bella Vita was August 1st, 2003, and I graduated uh, December of 2003. So I was actually in like my final classes, uh, you know, doing purchase orders, trying to figure out sales tax. I still have nightmares that I really don't have a diploma, but I do, um, but I really don't remember that last semester of school at all because I was heavily concentrating on trying to run a business. So. When I was graduating and had the store already, I mean, people actually thought I was absolutely crazy. Nobody had heard of the store. We were in Cordova, we were tiny, our volume, I mean, I didn't even take home a paycheck for the longest of time. So while it was great to kind of know a path, it wasn't a, a secure path at all. Um, most of my friends were going to work for International Paper and FedEx, and here I was trying to do this small boutique that was making no money. Um, I don't know, kind of crazy and scary all at once. So some of my first jobs were in retail, actually all of them were. And so I think that really built the foundation and love for retail that I have today. Um, I worked at Target, was my very first job. And I remember like asking to be the cashier and they were like on the spot hired. Who wants to ever be the cashier? That's the craziest job, right? But I loved it. Um, I loved the customer interaction. I loved the technology side of it. Um, and then I worked uh, at Baby Gap um, when it opened in Saddle Creek back in the day. Um, and Gap really set the tone for my love of retail. Um, I was actually in, in charge of a lot of their uh, visual merchandising rollouts um, at the age of 16, 17. I just had a passion for it. I loved it. Um, so it, it just has been what I always have loved to do. I've been so blessed to be able to do what I actually have a passion for. Do I ever wish I'd done anything more traditional with my degree? Absolutely. There's been times, days, moments, that it, it would seem so much easier to obviously be able to walk out that do those doors, not worry about 
you know, financials, not working out, worried about payroll, not supporting other people. Um, yes, um, but in the long run, absolutely not. I never worked really for anybody for most of my career. I can do as I please, um, but obviously that still requires, you know, a seven day focus on our business. So yes, there's been highs and lows, but overall I wouldn't change it for anything. So I love that we have complete control over the success of our business, but also the creative direction. So there's no red tape. We have an idea, we try it. If it doesn't work, we try again. Um, there's no one I have to get approval from. Um, we're a very collaborative team, so we work together all the time with the group to um, come up with new ideas and suggestions. But at the end of the day, it's my decision, and I absolutely love that. So the early days of Bella Vita were in one word, treacherous, looking back. Um, lots of lows, a few highs. Obviously, we were moving forward, but very slow baby steps. Um, we had one to five employees up until probably 2000, you know, seven, eight, when the crash came. Um, but overall, I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today without those early days, but boy, am I glad they are gone. <laughs> so in 2003, when we purchased Bella Vita, we quickly saw that Cordova was not a long-term solution for our vision for the company. Um, so we started researching, obviously, different markets in the Memphis area. Would have loved to jump to Germantown, but we just could not afford it at that point. So Collierville was our, our next, you know, jump, um, our baby step, I guess, in our growth plan, and it worked out wonderfully for us. But as I stated already, it was honestly, in the, in the grand scheme of things, too soon but it ended up working out. So in the early days of Bella Vita, revenues were terrible. Um, we opened Collierville in 2006, absolutely should not have done that. Um, we were not financially prepared for that move and we actually had two stores operating at once with very little revenues. The hardest part about getting the business off the ground was definitely the cash flow. Um, we had so many great ideas, but the revenues weren't there. We had purchased a business that had not a great revenue stream um, and it just wasn't coming in as fast as we wanted it to, to be able to move forward and, and keep diving into marketing and advertising and product development, all those things that we had ideas for, um, it just wasn't generating what we needed to at the point. The Collierville store was the first store that I actually built out and, and started from scratch because obviously I purchased Cordova pre-existing. Um, nervous, yes, um, but just hard charged it, honestly. I don't remember feeling really anxious. I think I always, in any of our projects and, and the risks we take, I'm not the nervous one in the partnership. I'm the one that's like confident in it and like it's gonna work, there's no way around it. You know, we might have some lows, but there's gonna be more highs and at the end, we will make it work. The option for it not to succeed was not even in my mind. Um, I, I just don't really have that mindset. Like I said, I'm not the one of the partnership that is scary, like scared when it comes to risks. I'm the big dreamer, so I see the end result and we just keep pushing. So managing the two stores was quite challenging. It was the, our first go around at having a store manager. So I was planted really 100% of my time in the new Collierville location. And then we had a great um, employee over at our Cordova location, but really and truly super challenging. I'm, it's very difficult to have two stores in the same city across town from each other. It's not ideal with the le level of service that we like to give. So while we thought moving to Collierville was gonna be an answer, an answer to prayers, um, it actually just magnified our problems. So where we were still having cash flow issues, where we still um, were wanting to do more marketing and more dreaming and not as much bill paying, <laughs> um, it really, it magnified what the problems were in Cordova. So now, you know, we are here in 2006 with two stores um, and, and not enough revenues coming in to support both. So while obviously looking you know, back 15 years, we wouldn't change that story. In the moment, it was a very, very hard time in, in our story. Oh, the tax man. We actually, in 2006, uh, had the tax man come and try to shut us down. Um, we were five years in not managing uh, our profits or cash flow at all. Well, definitely a pivotal point in our business um, really made me buckle down and realize that I had to, you know, learn profit and loss and balance sheets and all those things that come as a business owner um, that are taught in school, but really not taught in school. Um, my mom was working with us in the business at that point, still is today, um, but she really helped kind of navigate this scenario. And my mom and dad both are not the type to take on anything for me that's my fault, like ever. They're like, step up, you got to do it. Um, um, but she was instrumental in helping us kind of negotiate with the IRS um, and figuring out how we could get on a payment plan. So through the IRS, 
possible shutdown. Obviously, you can feel defeated. Um, and I was, I did feel defeated. My parents were super supportive. They were from day one. Um, obviously, mom was there to help me, um, but you had to have it front of mind every single day to get through it. Um, it would have been very easy to kind of run from it, hide from it, um, but we would have not had the same outcome if that had been my approach to it. So very, very hard, very hard emotionally. Um, I think it took us a good 10 years to even be vulnerable vulnerable enough to tell our team that, hey, this is part of our story. And um, looking back, it's a, it's a great part of our story, um, but in it, it, it sucked. <laughs> So 2008, obviously we were scared, um, but it was actually at that time our most profitable year yet. Um, I will say that we have always beat year over year in our numbers, no matter what's been going on with the economy, um, which we're super proud of. Um, we dig deep. I refuse to go backwards, probably where, why we are where we are today. Um, but we did obviously really look at costs. We looked at overhead. We looked at you know payroll, all the things that we could have control over and change those things. Um, luckily for us, people were, you know, still, um, you know, buying happies for people. Gifts, gifts never go away. Um, so while we're in a high end um, industry, we also have the luxury of being in an industry that people want to make people feel good. And so our business doesn't really really change much. Um, maybe the price of gift goes lower, but they still do it. Uh, weddings still keep happening. You don't stop weddings because of a bad you know, year. Um, so luckily for us, it actually ended up being a very profitable year for us. We did actually cut a few employees that year. Um, that's the only time in our business that we have done that. We did not even have to do that last year in the pandemic, but we're in a much different place in our business today than we were back in 2008. I will say that I have a completely different mindset and focus on our employees now than I did in 2008. M meaning while I understood it was their livelihood, it was also my livelihood at that time and still is today. But um, I didn't have the same gauge a perspective then of what that would do for that person, unfortunately. Um, but at that point, it was either survive or don't, and that's what we had to do. So again, we were in that point in our business where we were not truly profitable. So looking at the numbers and seeing how much each business was requiring financially, it did not make sense to have both still. Um, obviously, Collier Bowl was outperforming Cordova, um, and it just was a clear-cut decision. Um, I couldn't be in two places at once. We saw a lot of growth and potential in the Collier Bowl market. Cordova market was not. We had pulled a lot of customers from our Cordova store to our Collier Bowl store. Um, and so really and truly there was no other decision. When we closed the Cordova location, we only had one, maybe one and a half employees working over there. The volume just wasn't there. Um, so of course we absorbed them into the Collierville store, absolutely. I guess trying to, I mean, even today have a work-life balance is a challenge, but um, as you're trying to grow a business and it's your only means of pay, um, there was not a whole lot of time for, you know, a personal life per se. I mean, I was working the business six, seven days a week. Um, but uh, when my friends decided to set me up on a blind date, I went kicking and screaming, did not want to go. Um, but that starts the story of rent. <laughs>